I'm very pleased and honored to introduce Elisabeth Weidepass. She is the director of the International Agency for Research on Cancer from the WHO in Lyon since January 2019, if I'm right, Elisabeth. For many years before, and I think that you really have a very splendid CV, you were professor of medical and cancer epidemiology at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, but also you have many connections with Norway, with Finland, with Brazil, with every. Three years before your entrance at the IARC, you were head of the research department of the cancer registry in Norway. And last but not least, two weeks before your start at the IARC, we were sharing a taxi drive. I don't know if you remember, it was in the very beautiful Piemont region, and we were discussing a bit the nice wines there, but we also discussed the crucial role of the cancer registries for the future. So, in fact, Elisabeth, I cannot say but that you are very well placed. You're the right woman on the right place now at the right time to speak about the urgency of the cancer problem. And especially also what you promised to help us give visibility to the cancer registries and their role. So please, Elisabeth, the floor and the stage is yours in space. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me today. And it's really a pleasure and an honor to, to be here. And I will try to share my screen. So let's see if this will work out. Uh, there we go. And then I will put it in presenter mode. And I would like my colleagues to confirm that you can see the screen properly. Is that working fine with you? Yes. OK, great. So thank you very much for, for giving me the floor. And I, I will do my best to, to try to put in evidence the really the fundamental importance of cancer registration in Europe and worldwide. So, but before I go into details, I would like just to say a few words about IARC and what we do there, because maybe not all colleagues know what the International Agency for Research on Cancer is about. So IARC is, uh, is focusing on, on several initiatives to enhance cancer prevention worldwide. And since I arrived in office in 2019, we developed a new medium-term strategy. And it's summarized in this slide. So we have four prevention strategies, prevention to research strategies. The first one is to monitor the global cancer burden. The second one is to do research, to understand the causes of cancer and then to evaluate and implement preventive interventions, and then to disseminate broadly the information, including to stakeholders and to policymakers. And here I include the whole series of books we produce, the IARC monographs, the IARC handbooks for cancer prevention, and the IARC blue books, which is the, the main book on pathology worldwide, which is updated all the time. And then we have developed three emerging priorities, which is areas that we want to focus in the years to come. These are evolving cancer risk factors and population in transition, implementation research, and economic and societal burden of cancer. So data and cancer data is really the cornerstone of cancer control. Data is absolutely essential to base our actions and to decide which groups should be targeted with, with different approaches. A population-based cancer register collects all reportable cancer occurrences from multiple sources in a defined area and then summarizes this information in a comprehensible way to guide action. So at IARC, we take cancer registration as really a, one of the most important activities that we can do. And we want to focus now in, in improving the quality and quantity of data register, for example, for children, for adolescents, but as well as for adults, adding quality to not only quantity, but quality to, the, to, this, uh, to this data. So we have at IARC quite a focus in low and middle income countries countries where data in cancer registration is lacking mostly. So we have developed an uh, initiative which is called the Global Initiative on Cancer Registration, where we support countries acro across the globe 
to collect uh, data, to control the quality, and then co to collate it uh, across countries in a comprehensible and uh, incomparable way. So the Global Initiative of Cancer Register is abbreviated GICR, and we have then implemented six regional hubs across the world to support cancer registries in Latin America, in the Caribbean, in Africa, in Asia, and in Oceania. So we try then, after collating all this data, to disseminate it as widely as we possibly can. And here I show an example of the, the Global Cancer Observatory, which is an interactive web-based platform comprised of, of multiple subsites. We have the Cancer Today subsite that updated the Global Can 2020 estimates. Uh, including data from 185 countries for 36 cancer types. And we have, of course, published uh, the summary of this information in the Journal for Clinicians, and it's widely available free online uh, for, for you to consult. We have also developed the Cancer Tomorrow subsite, which provides tools to predict the future cancer incidence and mortality by 2040, and has been updated to incorporate user-defined trend-based projections for, for cancer across the globe. Then we have the Cancer Causes subsite that provides estimates on the population attributable fraction for major cancer risk factors, for example, smoking, uh, smoking tobacco, alcohol consumption, overweight, obesity, and so on. The new addition to this website is alcohol consumption, and it was added in 2021. And we did this in collaboration with the WHO offices, in particular the WHO office of Europe, because alcohol control is one of the major objectives uh, for the European Union and European countries in the next years. We also added in this website the cancer survival, uh, which is continuously updated to incorporate the most recent cancer-specific results from, from numerous uh, sites. So to, to establish research priorities, we must really understand in depth and be able to describe the global cancer burden. So let's have a, 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 a look, a careful look, what are, is the most recent compiled data that we have. And these, these are available in the Global Cancer Observatory and in the Global Can database. And in, it indicates that in terms of incidence, uh, we will have almost double the incidence in, in or the total number of cancer cases in the next uh, 20 years or so. So in year 2020, we had 19.1 million new cancer cases and we expected to have 28 million by 2040. These figures are really alarming and I think it's a clear sign that cancer prevention is a priority worldwide and we should be really uh, working together with our governments to implement cancer prevention uh, as soon as possible because we cannot sit passively and wait for these numbers to, to hit us. So in terms of loss of productivity, it's also a, a great uh, challenge in, in, and we can see the figures in, in this slide. So it's 70 billion, it's, it's absolutely enormous in terms of, uh, of all, the, all the, the, the impact that cancer has in communities. So the situation in Europe, so let's go from the world now to Europe. In 2020, we had 2.95 million people uh, with a cancer diagnosis uh, in the EU 27 countries and uh, 1.27 million people died from the disease. And the numbers will increase and the increase will be done mainly to the aging of the population, but also because of changing in risk fa uh, factors. So we predict that 3.61 million new cases by 2040, so a quite a substantial increase, and 1.67 million deaths from the disease. So this represents about 21% increase uh, unless we really implement effective measures to, to curb the, the occurrence of cancer. Just a few words about the COVID pandemic. So the COVID-19, has clearly had a major impact in, in healthcare across Europe and across the world. 
And we consider that it, the, the effects of COVID-19 will continue to be felt in the years to come in terms of incidence of mortality. So the risk factors have changed. People have smoked more, started drinking more alcohol, being more sedentary, and this will have an impact on the long term in the populations. Also, diagnosis of cancer was slower to be made. That means that populations will have uh, their cancers diagnosed at a later stage with lower chances of survival on the long term. Also, there, there was a major impact in cancer registration with, uh, with most cancer registries across the world being somehow affected. So what's the situation in the Netherlands? So we, we spoke about the world, then about Europe. Let's now have a look in the numbers in the Netherlands. So our estimates, and uh, I hope this coincides with the incidents that, that the estimates that the, or the data from the cancer registry that you will certainly be discussing further today. Uh, 132,000 new cancer cases in 2020. And the main types were colorectal, breast, prostate and lung cancer. Uh, so these numbers are staggering, is a major burden in the Netherlands. But there is a good news uh, of sorts, is that these cancer types are mostly preventable. So breast cancer, colorectal cancer, prost and lung, we know, we, we have knowledge about risk factors that cause these cancers and they are amenable, at least partially, for prevention. Also, they are amenable to screening and early detection, and they are treatable. And they and so and if treated early, patients can indeed be cured. In terms of mortality in the Netherlands in 2020, we had uh, 49,000 cases, so almost 50,000 cases, and the main causes were uh, was lung cancer. Again, for lung cancer, we know. It's a smoking. The vast majority is smoking uh, related. And there is one way to curb this is to make people stop smoking. But also, even if they are detected with a lung cancer, it stop smoking at diagnosis also increases the probability of surviving uh, very substantially. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, predictions, so we, we predict 171 new cancer cases by 2040, and uh, there will be circa 71,000 uh, deaths from the disease. And this represents a 31% increase in the overall burden of cancer if we don't implement preventive measures very, very soon to curb these, these numbers for, for almost 40 or even more, 40% or even more. So cancer data tell us that the cancer burden globally and in Europe and in Netherlands is uh, in increasing and there is a massive societal burden. So cancer registration data guides us to act and to act fast. And what our research indicates is that the, the, ma the major causes of cancer in Netherlands, in Europe and worldwide are tobacco smoking, alcohol consumption, overweight and obesity and infections, for example, with HPV, HPV human papilloma virus, which is amenable for vaccination to be, to be prevented. And these are really the, the population attributable factors that uh, fractions that I'm showing in this slide, indicating the percentage of all the total burden of cancers that could be prevented if we would tackle these risk factors in a more effective way. We did these estimates based from France, but they are replicable for Europe and basically the same with very small variations. So there's a great potential for prevention. And so our destiny in a way is in our hands to do something with this knowledge and implement control on the ground. And cancer registration is absolutely fundamental also to control and to measure and to show progress in curbing the cancer uh, epidemic. So the European Union is also uh, has quite a momentum at, at this moment regarding cancer. So the European, the EU missions have been a task force or of the Euro, European Union Horizon Europe Research and Innovation Programs for, for the years 2021 to 2027. And one of the missions uh, was a mission on cancer. Actually, it was the only health-related mission that uh, we were asked to, to develop. And the idea is, to, is really to develop very concrete solu solutions 
to propose the European Commission to target their efforts in the years to come. And what the Cancer Registries community proposed to the missions and that was adopted is that by 2030, more than 3 million lives uh, could be saved uh, by living together and better if we would act together as a community to curb cancer. So, and the priorities, when the, the pillars of, of priorities were more prevention, better treatment, more lives saved, and better quality of life for patients and their families uh, when living with cancer. In February 2021, the European Commission also published the European Beating Cancer Plan, which sets Europe's approach to prevention, treatment, and cancer care. So the European Beating Cancer Plan and the European Cancer Mission complement each other. The European uh, Beating Cancer Plan is sort of the political platform and set the goals for governments, while the mission has a very strong research component, but also implementation on the ground. So altogether, a great momentum in Europe, a lot of attention being paid to cancer, and this opens the door for, for the cancer registration community to thrive, to show their value in, in, in creating and making clear the importance of cancer registration worldwide, and in particular in Europe, for, for action and for measuring the impact of our action. So in short, I think we can really uh, not tackle the cancer uh, problem just by treating patients. We need to first understand the geography. Where are the cancer cases? Which cancer types there are? What do we expect in the future? And can we prevent them? And if so, how? And for the cancer types that we don't know how to prevent, we really need to speed up the research to understand better what, why these cancers develop and what we can do about it. And cancer data are, are the absolutely cornerstone of cancer control. Data is to be used for action. The value of the data is to guide action. And this is really one of the fundamental pillars of our activity at IARC, but for each and every cancer registry in the Netherlands, in, in Europe, and globally. So high quality cancer registration it should definitely be the basis for implementing evidence-based cancer control programs. And the global initiative for cancer registration will continue to assist low and middle income countries to develop capacity for registration all over the world. And I really count on the cancer research community and the cancer registration community in Europe and in the Netherlands to support this initiative, to, to disseminate knowledge and to support the registers elsewhere. So uh, I think I will stop here and give the floor back to you and to see if there are questions, comments, or if you would to, 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 to clarify anything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elisabeth. And indeed, we have some questions that entered the chat. And one of the first is, what is the role you see for cancer registries in prevention? Because you, you, you dig into the different uh, aspects of alcohol consumption and tobacco smoking, but what can the cancer registries do in their uh, work? Thank you. Thank you for these questions. The cancer registries can do a lot. And they can really first set the ground, indicate it to the governments, what's the incidence, what's the mortality, what's the survival in their region or in their country, depending if the, if the cancer registration is just for a region or for the countries. And then show the importance of cancer in, in that region or in that country. Then, then another initiative together with researchers is to calculate the population attributable fraction for different risk factors in the country and then argue or provide this data for the governments to guide cancer prevention initiatives. And based on the registry, you can also guide or, or uh, monitor progress in the fight against cancer. If you have a certain incidence and mortality at one year, what in your, in your cancer plan for your country, what do you want to have in five years and which are the measures you are going to take to decrease incidence and mortality? Also very important thing is the data on survival. By monitoring survival, you can benchmark countries and regions against each other 
to understand where do you need to work harder to make progress to improve quality of uh, early diagnosis and early treatment so you, you can monitor all this based on cancer registry data. So there, there are many ways of using cancer registration. And I think it's absolutely needed to have a cancer registration in a region and in a country, because without that, the, the Minister of Health is basically flying blind. You, they don't know where they are going in, and which should be the priorities uh, for, for their action. I think that your answer is immediately also tackling maybe a bit of the next question because how can cancer registries that already provide these data gain in, in visibility? How can they work on it? What, what should they do? How can they become visible? Yes, I think that that's a challenge because there, there is somehow an overflow of information, social media and other means. And, and I think what we have also observed with the COVID pandemic is that science is not always easy to communicate and, and to transfer knowledge to, to the public in a way that they would understand it. So for example, if you see the entire vaccine resistance to COVID vaccination, and you do think, well, is, this is just illogical. I mean, we are providing all the data showing the efficacy of the vaccine, but there is still a percentage of the population that refuses vaccination. I think similarly with the, with the cancer registration information, we can show the numbers, how many cancers we have, and how many cancers we can prevent, what's the impact, for example, of screening, and how better the survival is amongst the population screen, in particular if you can link the information from screening programs to your cancer registry. But the way we communicate that needs to be improved, dramatically improved, I would say. And I think we really need to associate ourselves with other professionals which are special, specialized in health communication or public health communication or simply in communication per se because epidemiologists or cancer registry staff is not necessarily specialized in how to communicate science. And it's a, it's a major challenge. And I think there's a lot to be learned by joining forces with professionals of communication in that regard. Thank you. Communication is indeed one of our challenges. And I think that is really a challenge for every cancer register. And what about Cancer registries can really very differ in quality and quantity that they are presenting. And how should we even go further in collecting data, for example, more on stage and treatment? Because we have that balance between the differences uh, of, of the cancer registries. Should we improve quantity and be complete? Should we go on with, with the cancer registries that are well equipped to move on with stage and treatment, for example? What, what is your opinion about it? Yes, the, in short, yes. I think stage at diagnosis, uh, it's, it's absolutely fundamental. Uh, and also patient reported outcomes. I think cancer registries, as in the Netherlands, that if you have the possibility to include for some key cancer types, uh, patient-related outcomes, this is very important because it will guide you in the, in the amelioration or improving the system. Uh, so not only, I mean, the traditional information that we collect in cancer registries is absolutely fundamental, but I think stage is, is very important to be able to understand survival and to identify holes in the system where you need to improve, but also patient-related outcomes. Another very important thing is to incorporate other databases in the re register or make them linkable linkages between different databases, for example, screening databases and vaccination databases, because this will, again, guide you to how to change public health practice for the benefit of the patients and the population in general. Yeah. You give us a lot of challenges, and I think I, I couldn't help seeing when you were presenting for the ENCR that you had a card on it on focus, and I think that you, that you have given us really many, many focuses uh, to work on in the cancer registries and that many challenges are standing now. So thank you very much, uh, Elisabeth, for your time, for your way of answering the questions and tackling the questions and your very good presentation. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye.